as the crypto elite and thousands of other investors have descended on the city of Miami for the largest crypto gathering ever. It's at uh, it's called Bitcoin 2021. Joining us right now is the mayor of that city uh, of Miami, uh, Francis Suarez. Good morning to you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate you being with us. Uh, you, you have, right. as we just said, the Bitcoin elite or the crypto elite uh, all in your city. You've, uh, you've, you've almost tried to rebrand the city uh, around crypto. What, what does that look like to you right now in terms of just the, the, both the energy that's coming off of it, but what you actually want the city to be when it relates to crypto? Well, first of all, the energy is, is off the charts. Uh, as you said, it's the largest Bitcoin conference ever. Uh, or there's been reports that 50,000 people will be attending the Bitcoin conference in one uh, way, shape, or form. And it's already changed the way our city works. Uh, we had FTX, which is a large uh, crypto exchange out of Hong Kong, uh, buy the naming rights uh, to what was formerly the American Airlines Arena, a $200 million deal. And that $200 million deal became a summer jobs program and became a, a strategy to combat gun violence uh, which, of course, is, is something that plagues every uh, large urban city. So we're starting to see the fruits of that rebranding. We want to be a city that focuses on the next uh, series of techn technological advances, artificial intelligence, uh, of course, uh, uh, crypto, biotech. Uh, so that's how we're positioning ourselves. And it's, it's bearing some significant fruit for us. Uh, you've, talk, you've, you've talked about the city itself uh, taking Bitco uh, Bitcoin and putting on its balance sheet, paying people. Uh, in Bitcoin and, and paying people in crypto. Are you doing any of that? Yes, we are. We're actively looking at it. The first thing we had to do is we had to make sure that we could surmount the legal hurdles. We got a legal opinion that at least allowed us to pay our employees in crypto and uh, accept crypto for fees and payments. Uh, we also needed the county to get on board. And there was a county commissioner, Daniela Cohen-Higgins, who also passed a corollary a resolution at the county to allow for tax payments to be paid in crypto. So we're engaging in that process. Now we have to go to a, an RFP, a, basically a solicitation for a third party that can manage it. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, we're, we're continuing to go along in that process. Holding it on the balance sheet is a lot more complicated because number one, uh, we're not allowed to hold something that's not fiat at this particular moment. So that will require a state law change. And then of course, the volatility of it is something that will probably need to work itself out before a city can can meet its, well, that's uh, what I was going to ask. I, there has not been a moment, even in the last decade, I mean, since the advent of Bitcoin, where it hasn't been volatile. Yeah. And so what do you think has to happen for that to change, for you to actually put it on your balance sheet? Well, or, I think or pay it, people. Has, I mean, are your employees really going to take, are your employees really going to take money in Bitcoin? Well, you know, I, it's up to them, right? It's, it's a choice that they would have. They certainly wouldn't be forced to in any way, shape or form. They would have the choice to do it or not do it. Uh, you know, Bitcoin, I think the last uh, the last uh, time I checked was up for the year, you know, a significant amount. So, so the volatility is is certainly there. I mean, one, one of us had a 60,000. Now it's so, somewhere, like you said, in the 39,000 range. So that there's been extreme volatility in the last uh, couple of months. And I think that's something that has to that has to work itself out. Obviously, it's a, you know, a trillion dollar plus market cap. Uh, and there's a lot of transactional trading and volume. But when you have, when one person, and you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big Elon Musk fan, but when one person has the ability to make one, one tweet and, and spiral the, the, uh, the price of a particular asset uh, at that level, you know, 10, 20%, as opposed to one or two or 3%, uh, because every, you know, there, there's volatility in everything. There's volatility in commodities, there's volatility in, in dollars, but not that kind of volatility. Once that works itself out with enough transactional volume, uh, and, and much more stability, then I think it's something that certainly could be a hedge against uh, fiat currencies and something that right. we can explore. How, how as, as concerned are you, though, about manipulation? I mean, we've been talking all morning about ransomware. You just talked about the issue of uh, somebody like an Elon Musk or anybody, you know, being able to push up the stock. I believe, actually, when you uh, went on uh, the air originally with Miami's plan around uh, Bitcoin, it also moved the price of Bitcoin. It, it did, and, and I think that's indicative of, you know, an asset that is fairly young, right? Uh, as we said, doesn't have, uh, you know, st stable trading yet. Um, and I think, that, listen, uh, the possibility of manipulation is, is obviously a, a, a fear, right, and a problem, uh, without a doubt. Uh, as you said, when, when I when I put out that tweet about what we were doing in the city, it was literally the most viewed video that I've ever uh, put out. I put out at 10:30 on a Thursday, and I think it had seven million views. That also indicates to me that the that the number of customers and the number of people that are interested in crypto 
um, is, is incredible. I've actually heard reports over the last couple of days that up to 100 or 150 million people are holding it. Mr. Mayor, real quick before you go, do you own Bitcoin yourself? I do. I own Bitcoin and I own Ethereum. Uh, at what, what it, price did you buy in at? So I bought uh, Bitcoin, I think, in the, in the um, high 30s, and I bought Ethereum. Uh, I, I forget the price, but it was about 1500 uh, I bought it the day that the U.S. Congress, the Senate passed the $1.9 trillion uh, stimulus uh, bill. And I knew at that point that inflation was inevitable and that there, there had to be some sort of a hedge. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.